emisiune realizată cu sprijinul Camerei de Comerț și Industrie a României. Bine v-am găsit, dragii mei, la o nouă emisiune Ambasador România. După emisiunea cu Costin Georgescu, care a suscitat un interes, aș spune, foarte mare în societatea românească, o emisiune care a devoalat multe lucruri, care a scos la suprafață multe adevăruri, pe care poate le bănuiam, pe care poate unii le știam, dar este cu totul altceva să le spună șeful Serviciului Român de Informații într-o perioadă foarte grea pentru România, 97-2000. E bine, după această emisiune, cu foarte multe controverse care au rămas de după, dar și cu foarte multe adevăruri pe care fostul director serii le-a spus, ne întoarcem la ambasadorii acreditați la București sau oaspeți aflați la București. Și astăzi am onoarea de a-l avea invitat pe un oaspete special, pe un invitat aflat în România, ambasador la rândul dumneavoastră sale, Ambasador de carieră care a fost, care a reprezentat statul său, este vorba despre statul Israel, atât în Statele Unite, cât și în Austria sau Elveția. Acum este director general junct în Ministerul Afacerilor Externe din Israel pentru afaceri europene. Nu o să fac foarte multe comentarii despre CV-ul domnului sale, pentru că este important să discut și să avem un dialog în primul rând și cu siguranță să aflăm lucruri cât mai interesante și mai la zi, prin care dumneavoastră să aflați cât mai multe despre ce se întâmplă în regiune, ce se întâmplă în relația între Israel și Europa, între Israel și palestinieni, între Puisisul și așa mai departe. Dați-mi voi așadar să trec direct la dialogul cu domnia sa, nu înainte de a vă spune și sau de a, le, de a vă mulțumi tuturor, tuturor prietenilor de pe Facebook pentru mesajele de încurajare, pentru comunicarea pe care o, o păstrați și sau o mențineți cu mine și vă rog să, să faceți acest lucru în continuare pentru că voi fi un personaj activ în relația cu dumneavoastră pentru că vă apreciez foarte mult feedback-ul, așa că Vă stau la dispoziție și cu adresa de Facebook, un loc unde putem să dialogăm și să îmbunătățim împreună această emisiune. Aștept chiar recomandări, idei la dumneavoastră pe Facebook despre cine ar trebui să fie invitat la emisiunea Ambasador România, fie că este un ambasador, fie că ar trebui să fie personalități care să aducă adevăruri, nu neapărat istorice, dar adevăruri ale unor vremuri trecute, să are unor vremuri prezente în emisiunea noastră. Trec la invitatul meu, este ambasadorul Aviv, Aviv Shiron. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, first of all, you are a guest in my country, so thank you for coming, thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, and uh, I am, um, I would say, a friend of, uh, of your ambassador here. She is a great ambassador, by the way. She cannot speak. She's here, but she cannot speak now because you are you are here with me. So she cannot comment on my uh, on my on my comments. So I, I I have the only chance to say nice things about her. Uh, she is a very very active ambassador, very direct. She was a guest of our talk show, and she told us many many things which are very important for the Romanians to know about the conflict in the Middle East, about your relation with the Palestinians about other issues, about the relation with the United States. But the chance to have you, former ambassador in so many places, such as Washington, Switzerland, UN, Austria, and also Deputy Director General for Europe, uh, it's, a, it's an honor. So thank you for accepting. Thank you for having me. Great. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I get used with the, with the Israeli uh, uh, guests. They speak uh, short and to the point. My first question, Mr. Master, what is happening now in the Middle East? It's a very uh, short question, <laughs> but needs a long answer. The problem is that the Middle East uh, is in turmoil right now. Actually, I don't, ha I don't think that uh, anybody can give you a clear answer on that, what is happening in the Middle East. Unfortunately, uh, it's, it's a revolution, it's a civil war, 
It's a crisis. It's maybe an opportunity for new beginnings, but it is uh, first and foremost for the Arab peoples to decide what they want to make with themselves, with their countries, with their future. Uh, we really hope that uh, it would lead to more freedoms, more democracy in, in the Middle East, because we in Israel, we always thought that when when and if the Arab world will become more democratic, the chances of uh, finding peaceful solutions to all our problems, not only the Israeli-Palestinian mm -hmm. issue, not only the state of war in which we find ourselves with most of the Arab uh, world, but also for their own problems, uh, the sure. chances for finding peaceful uh, solutions for those problems are bigger if the Arab world will become more democratic. So when the uh, so-called Arab Spring uh, broke out, these were the hopes. But at the same time, since we know our region, we uh, recommended uh, to our friends to wait a little bit and let the dust settle down. They didn't. And I think that it was right to recommend that because it didn't happen, as you just said, until now. It, we hope it would. Unfortunately, both the United States, France, and all the others did not wait and not listen to your advice. And the uh, Arab Springs became, became an Arab winter, winters, as uh, another expert in uh, the region, Jonathan Davis, mentioned in the last talk show. Mr. Ambassador, let me be the devil's advocate. Some people will say that the, this war between, uh, because it's a, practically um, Daesh and the Sunni and the, and the Shia, um, are two groups belonging to the Arab world. And in a way, people will say that this is benefiting for you because they are fighting each other and they are not uh, unifying themselves against you anymore. So they, they, have, they are occupied with themselves and even accuse Israel of being involved in this. Let me be the, the devil's advocate and ask you this. Uh, as someone who was born in Israel, grew up in this country, uh, and now uh, trying to uh, consolidate our foreign relations uh, with the whole world, including the Arab world. Uh, I know what war means. This is my memory uh, from the Yom Kippur War 1973 on the Golan Heights. I and many people of my generation in Israel and in the Arab world around us, we know what war means. So there will never be the day that I would say that a war is good because they are killing each other and they are our enemies, so we should be happy about it. Never. War is bad. War is death, suffering, uh, and the miserable conditions for anybody that is uh, part of it or being influenced by it. So I don't think this is the case. Uh, we hope that they will find solutions for their own problems. What we are trying to do is trying to stay out from wars that are, that are not our wars. Uh, these are religious wars in, uh, uh, inside the, uh, the Islamic world. These are wars between Arabs uh, and themselves. Uh, we can only uh, advise the rest of the world to try and do whatever is possible to help those peoples uh, overcome their uh, problems without violence. We know that there is no uh, military solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And this is why we support the two-state solution, two states that should be uh, uh, the result of direct negotiations, peaceful negotiations. Israel fought uh, already seven wars. Uh, there are all kinds of wars that we had to fight. None of them uh, brought us peace apart from uh, the peace that we uh, were able to reach with Egypt and, uh, and Jordan. But these peace treaties were the result of peaceful and uh, political negotiations, not of wars. Even though uh, at some point Egypt was, was fighting against Israel. Well, you know, uh, uh, one, one of the problems, and again, it's not uh, for us to decide and it does not depend on Israel, is the fact that in the Arab world, honor 
is often more important than the life itself. Uh, but this is a given fact, and I think after the war, the uh, 73, uh, 1973 Yom Kippur war yes. with, with Egypt, it was maybe easier for President Sadat to come to Israel and uh, negotiate with Israel, but the peace was the result of the negotiations, not of the war itself. And unfortunately, you don't have pleasant memories from that that moment. Uh, yes, this is true. It's I lost uh, many friends of my generation and of my unit. So when uh, someone talks to me about war, I know what it means. And I know that we will do anything in our power to avoid war. And this is why we uh, were fighting terror all those years. And this is why we have, unfortunately, uh, some experience and some know-how uh, about fighting terror, which I think can be shared today with our friends in Europe, including Romania and the European Union and NATO, and this is what we are trying to do. Well, I, I, for sure Europe needs your experience because they proved these days that they are not so capable in fighting terrorism and counter-terrorism. Uh, while your country is living in such an area where you have terrorism every day, but, uh, Mr. Ambassador, I was not mentioning this to accuse. I was just uh, the, the, the devil's advocate because real politic is real politic, and uh, sometimes in international, sometimes always in international relations, the interest, the interest of the country is uh, higher than anything else. That's why I mentioned that some writers, Western war writers to be more exact, they mention uh, that, that this war between the Arab uh, communities are helped helping in a way Israel not to, not to be at the target. And I don't believe that because I see that they are continuing to be aggressive with Israel, the Arab League at least. And uh, I want to ask you one more thing. Who, is, uh, who do you think is involved? I mean, how, okay, maybe you cannot tell us who is involved in this war between the two groups or more groups, because there are more groups actually than the Shia and the Sunni. But, Mr. Ambassador, who has the interest to maintain alive this war? Well, uh, this, this is a very complicated question with a very complicated answer, if there is a, a clear-cut answer uh, to that. Uh, in the past, uh, we were used to hear Arab leaders accusing Israel for all the bad things in the Arab world. Anything that was bad uh, and, and was uh, miserable in the Arab world usually was because of Israel or because of the conflict with the Palestinians. I think that this Arab Spring or Arab Winter, uh, whatever you want to call it, proved that uh, all those uh, problems that the Arabs have have nothing to do with Israel. It is all their own political, economic, social, religious problems and internal disputes. The poor guy who started the whole thing that burned himself in Tunisia did not do it in order to help the Palestinians or protest against Israel. And I think this, this has become uh, quite clear, not only to the international community, but also to many Arabs that they have to overcome their own problems in order to be able to uh, uh, face the challenges that, that they need to face. I think once they'll be able to do it, again, the chances for peaceful solutions in the region, including with Israel, will, uh, will become bigger. Uh, Why, sorry, sorry, Mr. Ambassador, you are, you are also posted in Washington. I see not so much involvement of the of United States in, in calming the situation in the Middle East. Um, I've seen Mr. Obama being very preoccupied by Cuba, very preoccupied by the, well, okay, not the peace, but the agreement with, with Iran, about which we, we will discuss. But I don't see him extremely preoccupied uh, or at least involved. Of course, we have a coalition, but my feeling is that while this coalition is begin, be, becoming bigger, uh, Daesh is becoming big, be bigger itself and the other groups as well. So my question to you is why the, the big powers of the world are not paying enough attention to this, uh, to this war, which is destroying countries, destinies, families, 
and uh, it's even making worse to you. I don't think you have to benefit, but I was the devil's advocate. But when it, you have a war in your proximity, like we have with Ukraine, it cannot be a good thing. But sorry, let, let me go back to the question. You are uh, your ambassador in, uh, in uh, you are a minister in the, for congressional affairs in the uh, United States. Why this administration was not so much focused on, on, uh, on making peace there? Well, uh, it is always difficult to, uh, uh, to analyze or maybe represent the interests of another country, definitely a superpower like the United <laughs> States. We are, a small, analyze. We, analyze. Are, we are a small country. Uh, uh, the, U the United States is our closest allies, has been for many, many years. Uh, but as a superpower, they, they have uh, interests and uh, issues they have to take care of in other parts of the world, not only the Middle East. Uh, we see now the challenges in Europe. You mentioned uh, Cuba and Latin America or the Far East with uh, another big superpower like China. Uh, I think that uh, Obama tried uh, in the beginning of his tenure as president to uh, be more influential what the Middle East is concerned, but after the, the Arab uh, spring, winter, or the crisis really in the Arab world broke out, uh, the Americans understood that they need to let the dust settle down, which has not uh, been the case until now. Uh, there is also, I think, uh, the, the fact that the elections in, in the United States, the presidential elections, are uh, coming nearer and nearer, yes. and uh, they are most, uh, mostly concerned with uh, the internal campaign sure. uh, than with the rest of the world. So I think we will anyhow need to wait until a next president is uh, uh, in the White House, and maybe then they'll have some more time and energy for the Middle East. Mr. Ambassador, I, I, uh, I like your diplomat diplomatic answers, but I, uh, I insist with my question. Um, that they waited the dust to, to, to settle down, but uh, while they wait the dust to be settle, settling down, they, we see death settling down. Because in, in Iraq and Syria, I don't see any dust. I see only, uh, uh, let's say, killings, I see territories which are occupied by vandals because if there will be a, a war between two states, maybe I could understand. It's not okay, as mentioned. War is war, and, and, and you, you leave this on your, on, your, on your own experience, personal experience. But when we have such gangs, because I cannot call them otherwise, I don't care if they are Shia or Sunni, because it's not only Daesh, it's also the other side. Um, when we speak about that, I don't see any dust. I, I see a lot of killings. Uh, we, I see a lot of refugees or mi migrants, problems being created. And uh, at the administration, my feeling is that they are not only waiting for the dust. It's just that they don't want to assume at the end of the mandate, uh, Mr. Obama doesn't want to assume any operation that would be um, affecting his party or his mandate. I think there are many aspects uh, to, uh, to this issue. Uh, when I said that uh, the, the Americans are waiting to, uh, for the dust to settle down, it doesn't mean that they do nothing. We just heard, I think it was last week, then in an attack, uh, the Americans could uh, take out uh, the second man uh, of, uh, of ISIS, and yes. uh, we know that they did it with Al-Qaeda, and you know, we di they did it with Bin Laden. These things take time. The problem, uh, I think, for the West is the fact that not only Obama, but also the European Union, NATO, uh, uh, has uh, a big difficulty uh, to uh, persuade the people that an operation on the ground, what we call yes. boots on the ground, yes. uh, is, is something uh, that uh, should be pursued. It involves casualties and uh, no government uh, uh, can afford these days 
the pictures of uh, dead soldiers brought in coffins covered with the flags of whatever country, the United States, the United Kingdom, France or Germany. And, and this is a big issue uh, in the Western world of today. We know that uh, without operating on the ground, you cannot win a war. You I will... agree with you. Yes, I agree but, with you. but we also understand as a Western democracy with uh, a pluralistic society, with the freedom of the press, where any move of the government, be it uh, about war or about peace, is being uh, criticized by uh, a certain political group, by the media, and this is the, the best thing uh, that can happen because I remember, I think it was Churchill who said that uh, democracy is the worst, but is it's the, the worst only, system, but the only it, one. Exactly. <laughs> Except the button. There's nothing better than <laughs> that. Nothing better, yes. Exactly. So uh, this is part of the uh, internal political debate now in many countries. Uh, I think that uh, the activities of the United States, of uh, member states of NATO and the European Union, even if it's not boots on the ground, uh, there are activities that are important in order to push the Middle East in the right direction, and I hope it will be successful in the end. Hopefully. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, we'll take a short break for commercials, uh, and because we speak about Daesh, we speak about the conflict in the Middle East, the Arab conflict, because we have also conflict uh, with the, between the conflict between the Palestinians, which is a historical one. But um, uh, I would like to make an introduction for one of our uh, uh, colleagues, uh, Adriana, which is making a very interesting, will make a very interesting, let's say, historical or um, how to say, she will present it in a, in a, in a very pragmatic, uh, in a very pragmatic uh, figures, what is actually happening in the Middle East. And then we come back and, uh, and discuss more about you, Israel, region, Europe, because you are for European Affairs uh, Director. Uh, publicitate și dau, uh, îi dau uh, legătura Adriani.